everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Snow Isle Library's Summer Shorts. This week, we're going to dig into art with videos about surrealism and impressionism. We'll also be making decorative masks, watercolor bookmarks, and paint with objects you can find around the house. Before we get started, I want to let you know about some other fun programs that you can watch from home. Tomorrow we'll be joined here on Facebook by Fat Brush Art Workshop at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. We also have Reading with Rover every Thursday and Family Trivia every Friday. Now let's get started with this week's Summer Shorts. Hi everyone, I'm Danielle from the Mariner Library and I'm excited to tell you today about an artist named Claude Monet and a style of art called Impressionism. I'll also show you a fun way you can make Impressionist paintings at home. Claude Monet was born in Paris, France in 1840. He was called the father of Impressionism. Here he is in a self-portrait from 1886. Impressionism is an art style where you see lots of quick, fast brush strokes and a lot of emphasis on light and color. From far away, you can see the objects in the painting, but up close, you see a lot of abstract lines and shapes. Art critics did not like Impressionism at first. They thought it was really messy and it looked kind of unfinished. In fact, Impressionism was an insult that critics made up when they saw Monet's painting Impression Sunrise in 1874. They didn't like it at all. Monet's most famous paintings were of the water lilies in his garden in Giverny, France. Monet completed about 250 of these paintings of his water lilies and gardens throughout his whole life. Here's an example of a Monet painting from 1900. This is Water Lily Pond, Symphony in Rose. Monet often painted the Japanese style bridge in his garden pond. Some of Monet's water lily paintings were huge. This is at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. They have three panels of Monet's water lily paintings that are over six feet tall and 41 feet long. One of the changes that we see over the years with the Water Lily series is that Monet stopped showing the trees and plants that surrounded the pond and just focused on the flowers and plants in the pond, and this was really unique at the time. You can see that effect in this painting from 1917 called Red Water Lilies. We don't see the edge of the pond or anything else in the scene. It's almost like we're right in the water too. Now that we know a little bit about Impressionism, we can start to make our own paintings. Monet used oil paint, but today we're going to use crayons and watercolor paint in a technique called wax resist. To start our paintings, let's try to think of a nice nature scene. It might help if you can go outside and look at some flowers or trees, but we can also use our imaginations to think of a nice pond scene like Monet's garden with lots of plants and flowers. To set the scene, we'll use bright crayons to outline the objects in our painting. For example, I'll use a green crayon to draw some plants or maybe a lily pad. And I'll use really short, fast strokes with the crayon. And it can look a little messy. And you don't want to color it in all the way because you want to leave room for that paint to really shine through. So there's a lily pad with kind of a plant growing out of it. And I might also use a yellow crayon to show the reflection of the light on the water. I can almost just kind of scribble with that one. It can be very abstract. It can kind of look like anything you want it to. And now I'll take my paint and I'll do blue watercolor on top of my crayon for the water. And I might even blend it with some green watercolor around where the plant is. Mix my colors a little bit. And the cool thing about watercolors is they just kind of blend in with each other. Okay. Since it's a little wet, 
It might be a little hard to see, but you'll see the crayon kind of popping through the paint right there. There's our plant and our, our sunlight reflected on the water. And I'll show you an example where everything's dry. And in this one, I decided to draw some really colorful water lilies. I did some other plants, um, and that's the reflection of the sun on the water. And I did green and blue watercolors on top, and you can see the crayon really shining through. And in this example, you can see the really fast strokes from the crayon. I really like how the paint shows up through it. It reminds me of the light and shadow in Monet's paintings. And these can be very abstract. They don't need to look very realistic. In fact, people actually said they thought Monet painted just the idea of things instead of objects themselves. So your painting can look like whatever you want it to. Well, I hope you'll try the wax resist technique at home and have fun. Hi everyone, I'm Tamara and I'm from the Darrington Library and today I'm going to show you how to make watercolor bookmarks. So I have some samples here. This is one I made with primary colors and I even did the back. Here's one with some purple and some green. I kind of just had fun and went willy nilly with my colors on this. I kind of tried to get a little bit of a fire effect with this one. So the cool thing about these bookmarks is I made them without any watercolor paints. How you ask? With washable markers, a spray bottle of water, and just a recycled old sandwich plastic bag. Um, I washed it out, cleaned it up, give it a bit of a trim, and now I have something I can use in art. So those are the supplies you'll need if you want to do this. You will also, of course, need some sort of paper. I happen to have watercolor paper lying around the house, but if you don't, you can use cardstock, you can use an envelope if you want to maybe do it as an envelope. You can use plain old printer paper. I've just noticed with printer paper, it tends to curl up as it dries. So you might have to lie it flat between two thick books or between the pages of a thick book so it will lie flat again. So why don't we go ahead and get started. I'm going to put my bookmark underneath the plastic so I can kind of see where I need to color. And then I'm going to pick some colors. Um, one of my favorite colors is purple, so I think I'll start off with some purple. I know I'm wearing green today, but my favorite, one of my favorite colors is purple. So you can do whatever you want. You can do swirls, you can do stripes, you can do dots. Just kind of have fun with it. Um, and then I think, let's do some blue. Right, because if you mix blue and red together, you get some purple. So let's go ahead and add some blue. And why don't we go ahead and add that red. See what we get. We might get a couple different shades of purple and that could be fun. And I have brad tip markers you can see. So I can use the little fine point that comes with these or you can lay the marker down a little bit more and get a brighter stripe. Next, you're gonna spray the bottle. Now you wanna think about the colors you're using because the more times you spray with the water, the more runny the um, marker will become. And so you don't want to get so runny all the colors mix. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on it. Watch how it's beating on the water, on the plastic. And there you go. So I'm just going to slide this piece of paper out from underneath and just lay it over nice and easy. Kind of let it sit for a second and press it down. This is the hard part. This you have to kind of give up a lot of control. I'm not that good of an artist, so I'm happy to just kind of let things be whatever they are. But I still really enjoy art projects and crafts. Okay, and then if we just lift it up, we can look and see, and you can see how it got a little watery at the top, but it's a little bit more defined here. So that's kind of cool. 
Um, what fun thing to do is you can actually layer it. So this is one I did earlier. And I'm going to give my board a quick clean with just a paper towel. You can just wipe off all of the watery mess. Sometimes it's fun to look at your paper towel and see what colors you pick up. Okay, so do any of you like Frozen? Yeah, I like Frozen too. And I was just re-watching it and I noticed how the Arendelle flag is green, yellow, and purple. So I thought I'd make a Frozen bookmark. Okay, so did you know we have Frozen books at the library? We do, we have a couple different ones. We have some early readers about Anna and Elsa. And um, we have a book that takes place between Frozen 1 and Frozen 2. It's called The Forest of Shadows. It's really nice fun. All right, and then we just give that a spray again. And I'll lay it over to do my second layer. Just be sure your first layer is dry. Let's see what we get. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Could be a field of flowers. So I hope you had fun today. I hope you're inspired to do this project. And take care and keep reading. Bye. Hi, I'm Tracy from the Freeland Library. And I'm going to show you some cool art created by three special artists called Surrealists. The Surrealists use their dreams and imagination to make a whole new kind of art. In your imagination, anything can happen. You can imagine you're flying on a magic carpet or walking your dog on the moon. When you wake up, do you remember your dreams? Sometimes unusual things happen in your dreams. Have you ever ridden on a dinosaur or a dragon or a unicorn? That would be cool. Our first artist is Salvador Dali and he painted things from his dreams. In this picture, you can see there's a cliff and a beach, but then there are some unusual things too. The clocks look like they're melting. And what's this strange gray shape in the middle? Is that a shell or a person or an animal? Dolly wanted you to decide. How does this painting make you feel? Would you want to be in this place? Our second artist is Merit Oppenheim, and she was from Switzerland. Oppenheim created this sculpture by covering a cup and a spoon with fur. Would you want to drink out of that cup? Oppenheim created this way out sculpture by mixing up everyday items in a surprising way. Our last artist is René Magritte. He came from Belgium. Magritte painted this magic room full of everyday objects, but they're not all the right size. And look at the walls he painted with the clouds. Do you think this room might be floating up in the sky? Would you want to live in this house? And what would you do with those giant things if you had them? Magritte also liked to paint this black hat called a bowler hat. And sometimes the hat was sitting on the person's head like in this picture, but sometimes the hat was floating up above their head. There are also some other unusual things about this picture. This is a book I liked called Magritte's Marvelous Hat. And in this book, Magritte is a dog. And here he is, he's painting a picture, and there's that floating hat. And Magritte says, I can't paint when you're bouncing, just be a hat and sit on my head. That was when he flew out the window. So there's the hat, watch, here we go, out the window. Magritte also liked to paint apples. And you can see, there he is wearing that black hat again, but the apple's covering the person's face. 
Why do you think he painted it like that? Sometimes instead of an apple, he painted a bird in front of the person's face. This is another book I liked called Magritte's Apple. And here you see Magritte is painting a picture and he's wearing that black bowler hat and he doesn't have a face. And he says he wants to be a painter of apples. He dreamed about being a painter of hats. A painter of apple hats. Well, those are some interesting surrealist artists, but now it's time for you to create your own art using your dreams and imagination. If you have some colored paper and glue, you could put together a picture. In mine, I decided to have my house floating up in the clouds and the sun is raining. And is that flower growing out of the sky or is it growing out of the ground? You decide which way my picture goes. I had so much fun doing that, I decided to make another picture on the other side. You can see the person is surfing and they're wearing sunglasses. The sky is dark and there are the moon and the stars. But the sun is out too. Is this daytime or nighttime? Maybe you have some old magazines or catalogs around your house that your grown-up would let you cut up. Go through and find some pictures that you think are interesting and cut them out and then put them back together in a new way. You can see my picture has winter and summer. There's a car flying over the mountains. And what would the people in this little house do with this giant watch? And why does that lady have a flower over her face? Or maybe you have a box and you could create a magic room like Magritte did. Go around your house and find some interesting things, put them in your box and decorate the walls. I glued mine down so it would be easier to share with you, but you can leave them loose and then take a picture maybe and rearrange the room and take another picture and tell your family a story about what's going on in your magic room. Those are just a few ideas to get you started. You can do use anything to create your surrealist art. You don't have the things that I talked about. You could paint or draw or color. You could use things out of the recycle, a paper bag maybe. I hope that you'll try to make some surrealist art and I'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Sasha and I work at the Mount Lake Terrace Library. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a simple, fun mask. Something like this or something like this. And you probably wouldn't guess, but I used an egg carton to make my mask. It's very simple. All you have to do is find a, an egg carton and then cut it out. So there are a couple different ways you can do it. Maybe something like this, or if you want to decorate your mask, you may want to have more surface so you can attach things to sides. Anyway, I would ask an adult to help you with the cutting part. And also you can use your mask to put on the wall. It's a beautiful decoration. Or you can make a mask that you are going to wear. In this case, you would also need to have an adult help you cut a couple holes in the back of your mask, so you can see. But whichever way you go, it's very easy. It may take you longer than five minutes, because if you decide to paint your mask, it probably will take an hour or maybe even a couple hours for the mask to dry. And as you can see, you can paint it any color you want. You can use any kind of paint you have at home. What's important that before you paint, you use backside of a paintbrush. Or maybe if you don't have a paintbrush, you can just use a pencil. And you need to poke a couple of holes on each side of the mask. And we're going to use those holes later to attach um, string. So you can either put it on the wall 
or wear it. So, after you poke the holes, it's time to paint. I found some paints in my home, but you know, honestly, you don't have to do anything. You can leave your mask very simple, unpainted, and decorate it with whatever you can find. When I uh, waited for the paint to dry, I went on a treasure hunt around my home. And guess what? I found a lot of things I didn't even know I had. I found a lot of paper and I used paper and fabric to make those kind of feathers and put them around my mask once it was dry. I also found some rhinestones and beads and shells and I made a little necklace that I put around my mask. And then I attached it all to the back of my mask with painter's tape. But again, I had to wait for my mask to be dry. And then I decided to look for more fun things. And I found some pencil erasers. I found some flannel fabric. And so I made another mask. Isn't it fun? And then, just in case you really can't find any of those art supplies in your home, again, you can do something very simple and put leaves. I used um, white paper to make teeth for my mask and a black marker to make eyes. And voila, your mask is ready. I hope you can make something really, really amazing. And if you need more instructions or step-by-step uh, -step guidance, go please to snowisle.org slash summer reading website and there I'm going to post um, all the information you need to make the mask. I hope you'll have fun! Hi, my name is Dawn and I work at the Salton Library and today I'm going to demonstrate some paint pouring techniques using household items you may already have. Thank you to the Friends of the Salton Library for providing some of these supplies for us today. Paint pouring is a fluid art technique where you pour paint onto a surface and use gravity by tilting to create beautiful works of art. You need just a few things to get started. The first is paint. Acrylic is the most common. Um, you can get these at the dollar store online or in the craft section of any store. You can also use poster or tempura paint and you can also use household paint if you have supervision and permission. The next thing you need is a pouring medium. This is Floetrol. You could use this or PVA glue to thin down the paint to make it more workable. If you don't have either of these, you can go ahead and use water. The third thing you need is a surface to paint on. The most common is canvas. These are just from the dollar store. And the great thing about canvas is that once it's dry, you can use it over and over again to keep creating new designs. You can also use paper or you can use a harder substance like this foam board, or you can use smooth wood. You can even use picture frames and paint the glass and put it back in the frame and hang it on your wall. Glassware makes really great things to use. This is a wine glass that was just paint poured, flower pots, pumpkins during the holidays, even a spaghetti jar from your recycle bin. Nothing is off limits. So today I want to show you a few techniques. Um, here's the paint. I've pre-mixed it. You'll want to do that because the process goes pretty fast. I'm going to go out of frame for a minute so I can give you a close-up look at what we're going to work on. The first thing I want to show you is how to paint on rocks. I'm sure many of you have these in your yard. These are some big smooth ones, but any shape really will work. Here are some that I've already done in a couple of different techniques, which I'll show you now. The first technique I use with my paper cup, because it's pretty easy to pour that way, is to do layers or lines in the different colors I want. I like to use black or white because it gives a good contrast. And once you have your rock painted like that, you can use a straw to muddle the colors for a marbled effect. The other way that you can do it 
is to combine colors into one cup just in layers whatever you want and then swirl that over the rock and this time you'll want to tilt it can be pretty messy so make sure you have newspaper or tablecloth down or maybe even do it outside and you get a beautiful marbled effect and some great paperweights. You can also use egg cartons to dry them on and just an old pan with a cookie cooler on top is what I've used. A great gift for someone. The second thing I have to show you is using a funnel. You might have one of these in your kitchen. You're gonna put your finger over the bottom and use a paper plate. This is great because it's really sturdy and has natural rim, so it's not quite as messy. And I'm just gonna fill up my funnel with a couple different colors. Maybe a little black. And then very Carefully put your finger on the plate and put the funnel on there and when you're ready you just lift very slowly Until all your colors come out And then you can use the plate to tilt and maneuver To get any design that you want The last way I'd like to show you is using sink stoppers or colanders. These are great because all of the holes are usually different shapes and sizes, so you can get lots of different designs. I'm gonna use the blue one. I just have a piece of, a piece of poster board taped on there. So you're just gonna layer whatever colors you want again. And then slowly lift it up so that the paint has a chance to drip through the holes. And then once you get the paint out, you can start churning. You can use a lot of paint if you're trying to cover the whole sheet. Awesome. Another way to do it is with a big colander. And this is a lot of fun. I'm going to use the rest of my paint and make a big mess. And again, you're just going to slowly pull up. So all the color comes out and then you have some great colors to work with. You can pop the bubbles if you want and make some crater effects for you. And you have a beautiful work of art. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you're inspired to create some art of your own. You can visit snowwild.org slash summer dash reading for more information and resources. Have a great day. Goodbye. Welcome back. I hope you had fun. Come back for more summer shorts next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. In the meantime, you can read, learn, and discover by visiting snowisle.org slash summer reading for a full list of programs and a printable reading log. Read 10 hours this summer and earn a free book. Read 10 more hours and you'll be entered in a grand prize drawing. Keep digging and we'll see you next week.